asking a comedian to improvise an entire stand-up set is like asking a magician to do actual magic. House is open. Nobody has any idea what's on their set list, right? No. 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 That's correct. You get to the topics one at a time. Audience sees them same time you do. Ah. <laughs> As long as you're hilarious, nothing can go wrong. I can't believe I'm actually doing this. I want to go up again. I want to go up right now. Oh, God. <laughs> Will you please welcome the brand new, never before seen set list of Mr. Mort Song. Good to be working for the people in the UK who hacked my phone recently. <laughs> you know, uh, I want to say to our, our hosts here on the show that uh, I made a picture in London recently and I was very lonely. So the director said to me, go down to Piccadilly and go to Langan's Brasserie because Michael Caine owns it. If you go down there, you might see people from Los Angeles. So I went down there, and when I walked in, Michael Caine was by the register. He said to me, Mort, what are you doing in London? So I said to him, we're all back. The experiment failed. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, there's a judge in the audience, a federal judge. And I want to say something about that because I had occasion to be in federal court. And uh, the judge got into it with a witness who was a 91-year-old black man. And he was called Doc Whitehead. And the judge, who was appointed by George Bush for life, said, uh, are you a medical doctor? He said, no. He said, are you any kind of a doctor? He said, no. And the judge said, then what does it mean when people call you Doc? And a witness said, it's like when they call you your honor. It don't mean nothing. <laughs> so, a true story. Well, oh. I'm going to answer the suggestion with a quote from Sigmund Freud, who said, just because you're paranoid doesn't mean they're not out to get you. <laughs> so, <laughs> you remember Freud, it was not very popular in Mill Valley. And who knows? If there is a truth serum mandate, nobody at CNN will take it. <laughs> I think. Anybody? <laughs> That's what we work for. And uh, <laughs> the, uh, did you notice yesterday when Hillary Clinton was in Egypt, the crowd heckled her, and when she Went to the plane, they all yelled, Monica, Monica. <laughs> Americans never forget. <laughs> and if you don't remember that incident, a lot of guys who work racier than I do, at the time of Clinton and Monica Lewinsky, said, if a guy could get a Jewish girl to do that for him, he deserves to be president. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, the messenger is Bradley Manning. <laughs> but since we got a loaded gun, and we'll settle for shooting Julian Assange. And uh, I think so. 
you know that the mistake you make with this president is you're not supposed to win. You're just supposed to go there and stay there. That's the idea of the wars. You're supposed to go to Afghanistan and stay there. He's only got five going now. So, uh, uh, but the same people will probably vote Democratic, I would suggest. <laughs> I told you it's the bumper sticker, didn't I? It says, Obama, I guess. <laughs> Why do we need to obey authority? Uh, because authority will lose its self-confidence if we don't obey them. <laughs> Who's authority? Who's the authority? The president? Who's he obeying is the question. We don't have any authority. That's why we don't obey anybody. <laughs> you follow up? Ladies and gentlemen, both songs.